Hi guys. So today I'm gonna to help all of you people that get back pain when you're running. Hi guys. Well, today's video has been inspired by a couple of our members. We had a, a running wad today uh, here at CrossFit and a few of the members started to complain about getting lower back pain when they're running and they're asking me as reasons why that happens. I mean, where do I start? Because there's a multitude of, of things that can cause lower back pain and lower back pain when you're running. But I think uh, some of the key areas I'm gonna to cover today. So having good posture when you're running is really important. And by good posture, I mean neutral spine. That's the first thing. So a lot of people, and often caused by problems with their tightness and weakness in their muscles, are gonna have posture where their lower back tends to go into too much extension. So the first thing is, how do you find neutral spine? I find the simplest way to do that is in a four point kneeling position. So I'm gonna show you here on the floor. So I'm gonna get into a kneeling posture here. Hands under my shoulders, knees under my hips. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create as much arch as I can in my back. And then I'm gonna tilt my pelvis under and flatten it out. Then I'm gonna create that arch again and then I'm gonna find that middle position there. And that's a neutral spine. Now, once you can feel that and feel that engagement, you then need to be able to learn to do that from a standing position. So I'll do the same in a standing position where I'm gonna go arch, tuck my pelvis under, arch, tuck my pelvis under to the halfway position, okay? So midway between full arch and fully tucked under. So it's just a small tweak from there. Now, it does vary in terms of what it looks like from person to person, because people have different postures and and obviously your posture changes due to your lifestyle and stuff like that, but finding that neutral posture and trying to, first of all, do that when you're walking and trying to feel that position when you're running as well is important. Now, that's one of the areas, but poor posture is often caused by tightness in certain areas. And the most common area people get tight for running is in the hip flexors, okay? These muscles here at the front of your legs. Why are people tight in the hip flexors? Well, because the hip flexors does this. So what do we do most of the time? sit down. If you're in an office job, you're sitting in your car, you get on the sofa, you sit down all day long. That's why I don't like machines in a gym where you're sitting down because all you're going to do is spend, you know, spend eight hours of work sitting. You're going to spend another hour in the gym sitting. So stay away from those. Tight hip flexors, they're going to restrict how much your leg or your hip even can go into extension this way. So if your hip can't go into extension because your hip flexors are tight, then what's going to happen is as your leg goes back, you're gonna get that leg going backwards by getting back extension, okay? So your back is gonna extend this position here and you're gonna get this pinching feeling in the lower back. So you need to make sure you're stretching your hip flexors. I'm gonna show you a very simple one, quite a mild one. Um, and that is from this position here, one foot on the floor. And from this position, you're gonna drive your hips forward to stretch out the hip flexor. You can increase that by putting this back foot on an elevated surface, or even if you're feeling really brave, you can put that back foot up against the wall and drive it forward. That's gonna give you a much more intense version of the stretch. And if you add a little overhead reach as well, that's gonna increase that stretch further. But tight hip flexors are one of the key reasons for back pain in general, um, and that'll be exacerbated when you run, because obviously you require that hip extension. The other thing that can happen is, obviously, if you're used to recruiting your lower back, then your glutes are gonna be switched off the whole time. So it's really important you switch on your glutes before you go running. We use an exercise here in the gym uh, called an X-band walk. I'm gonna show you this very simple one here. So step on one of these bands. These are easily obtained from Amazon. They're about 9.99. You don't need too much tension, believe me, when you do this. You're gonna cross that band over. You're gonna push hips back and bend your knees. Keep your feet pointing forward, don't let them turn out here. Drive your knees out and then go into this position here. Now this is gonna activate the muscles in the side of the hip. Uh, glute medius is one of the main ones. And you can do this little walk here. You can do it as a side to side or forward and back as well. The minimum I suggest is 10 in either direction, a um, couple of sets of those. You can't really overdo that one. The other one you can do to activate the glutes is put a band around you. I've got one of these small bands here. You can use a big band and just double wrap it. Put this around your knees. 
like so. And there's two exercises you're going to do. One is a glute bridge. So from this position here, press your knees out, drive your hips up, really squeeze together there. Try to focus on when you go down, keeping your spine neutral. Again, you can compensate by extending through your back, so you don't want that. So you want to make sure, draw your pelvis to your, to your ribcage, squeeze your glutes and raise up here. That's your first one. Sets of 15 of those are pretty good. And the other one is a side lying clamp. Not the most manly looking exercise, I know, but you do feel it. So from here, band around you, and all you're going to do is keeping the soles of your feet, the edges of the soles of your feet touching, you do this movement here. And again, sets of 15, you'll start to feel that activating here. Any core strength exercise as well is going to help you with that lower back pain, because obviously the more strength you've got in your midline, the easier it is going to be to hold yourself upright during that. Now the final area where people get lower back pain is from tightness in their piriformis. The piriformis is a small muscle that runs across the top of your buttocks here. It's basically a, a stabilizer. It acts in terms of internal and external rotation. It also crosses your sciatic nerve. So if any of you get any sciatic pain, that's a pain that runs often down the side of your leg, sometimes into your back, you might even feel it down the side of your knee, like a shooting type pain, then the piriformis can be one of the causes of that. It's tightness is going to stop your hip being able to move properly and function properly. So you've got a piriformis rollout we're going to do first, and then we're going to do a piriformis stretch. So a piriformis rollout, you're going to use, a lacrosse ball is best for this. You can use a foam roller, but they're not quite as precise as what you're going to do. So get into your lacrosse ball, bring the leg that you're going to work across the thigh of the opposite leg. Get that lacrosse ball right underneath your butt there on the side towards the top of your pelvis and just start working that until you feel areas where it's tight and you see my sort of eyes pinching there because it's a little bit tight in this area. So just work circular motions and just try to feel that tension and work that out. This is a great solution if you haven't got time for a sports massage, but if you've got a great soft tissue therapist, then go and see them because they will definitely get to the root of that problem. Okay, work through that and then add to that a piriformis stretch, which is basically using the same position. This time you're going to be lying on your back. So what we're going to do is we're going to get, again, the, the leg we're going to be stretching. We're going to put that across the opposite thigh. This time you're going to lie back, bring that leg up, reach through the hole in the middle, grab the opposite leg, pull that towards you, and then using the muscles on the outside of the hip, press that knee away. Or if you want to give assistance, you can use this elbow here to press in. And you'll definitely feel that stretch across the back there. If you cannot get this leg to 90 degrees to your body, so in other words, if you're in this position here, where this knee is pointing behind me, then that piriformis is tight. There's a good indicator for you. If you can get it to 90 degrees, then that's pretty good range of motion. It's not too bad in there. Obviously, there might be other contributing factors to why you can't get your hip open there. If you've got any um, actual problems with the actual function of the hip itself, the hip joint, that could be an issue as well. But the piriformis is quite often the cause of that. So working on this stretch, give that at least, I don't believe in a 30 second stretch, I believe at least a minute hold for any kind of improvement is required. So there we have it. If you get back pain when you're running, things you're going to look at is your posture. Look at your mobility, especially in your hip flexors and your piriformis. And then make sure your glutes are firing and they're active. So strengthen those areas as well. Thanks, guys.